thank God. So we give God thanks and praise again for um, what God is going to do today. We, I, well, I'm, I'm expecting. I'm always expecting because God always shows and he always gives us something new, something fresh, something that will help us to get get out of the situation that we're in and to propel us into our future. God will always encourage us and gives us new new um, ideas, new vision, new energy, new empowerment. God will always strengthen us in every area of weakness. God comes in and he, he, he says, you know, though you may be weak, yet in me you are strong. You know, we're not strong in our own strength but in his strength in his strength we um god is the one that gives us the strength that we need um to keep on keeping on so yes we give god thanks give god thanks for glory be to god i just want to read a couple of scriptures um today i just wanted to um to just Thank the Lord. Really, really just thank the Lord. Um, just to give him thanks. And there's lots of scriptures that talks about thanksgiving. So I'll just read a few of them. First Chronicles 16 verse 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever Colossians chapter 5 verse 15 says let the peace of God let the peace of Christ rule your heart rule your heart since as members of one body we were called to peace and to be thankful shall I read that again let the peace this is a peace is a gift from God. Let the peace of Christ, let it rule your heart. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and to be thankful. So when you're in your right mind, when you're in your sound mind, be thankful. Because there's lots of people that are going off their minds right now. There are lots of people that are, you know, they're losing their, they're, they're losing their mind. But we thank God that he, we're in our sound mind and we allow the peace of God to continue to rule our heart and mind. When it says your heart, it means your, the, every part of you. Let that peace of Christ rule, rule and reign. You know, let that peace, let it, let it, let it just, let it just surround us like a shield, like, like a blanket, that peace that surpasses all human understanding. We cannot understand how come we're just, you know, we're just calm. Because God gives us that peace, that peace in our hearts. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2 says, devote yourself to prayer. Be watchful and be thankful. So when we're praying, it's one thing to pray, but it's another thing to believe in what we're praying for. And thank God for it. Say, oh God, I'm, I'm thanking you that it's already done. I'm thanking you. You know, when we pray, you know, when I pray, I, I'm expecting it. I'm looking for it. I'm believing for it. You know, because I'm expecting, I'm expecting, I'm, I'm expecting that what I prayed for God is going to manifest it. So I am looking for that thing to manifest. And I'm thanking God. Thanking God during that time. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 says, I will, I will always thank my God for you because of his grace given to you by Christ Jesus. God has given us his grace. So we always need to be thankful. Always need to be thankful. First Timothy chapter four, verse four says, for everything God has 
created is good and nothing is to be rejected as if it's received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Uh, I'm sure that's talking about, you know, we commit everything to God, commit everything to God and expect God to bless it. Philippians chapter four, this is a familiar one to us. Philippians four, chapter six, verse six says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I love that. I love that. We're not, we're not to be anxious or fretful or worried, you know, panicked. We do all these things, but the Bible's telling us in Philippians, we're not to do all these things. It says, do not be anxious. So it's something that we shouldn't shouldn't be in the, um, the habit of behaving anxiously and fretful and worried, but we do. But Philippians said, if we give God thanks and make our requests made known to God, if it's something that we're struggling with, ask God. But when you ask him, give him thanks, give him thanks. It says with thanksgiving and present you present your request to God. And when we do that, this is what the scripture says, the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. So it will guard your spirit and it will guard your mind, it will guard everything. When something is on guard, it means it's protected, it's secure, it's safe, it's covered. It covers us and we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be worried when the peace of God is, is guarding our heart and our mind. A couple more. Um, Psalms 28 verse seven says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. I love that. He is the strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped, my heart exalts, and with my song, I will give thanks to him. You see, in, <laughs> the scripture is so clear. Thanksgiving is very, very important. Saying thank you to God. Do you know how we can bless God? By giving him thanks, giving him praise. Say, God, I worship you. I thank you. Father, I thank you that you, what you you it's already done i thank you that you've already prepared the way ahead of time i thank you that lord my 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 situation has changed because i've committed to you and i thank you in advance for that continue to give god glory and praise offer to god a sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving and it's with the fruit of our lips that we give him praises you know we give him a sacrifice from our heart you might say ah oh, why is it a sacrifice because you might not feel like doing it but God said when you give him a sacrifice of praise let me tell you and you do it from your heart God receives that praise he receives that offering and it goes up to him as a sweet smelling savor so father we want to thank you father God for your word your word that is alive and well, your word that brings life, your life, your word that brings healing. Father, thank you that your word transforms our hearts and our minds. Father, even if we were feeling unthankful today, Father God, we've you've shared it in, in your word, Father God, that we should give you thanks. Father, we shouldn't be anxious, we shouldn't be worried, we shouldn't be stressful, we shouldn't be taking all these things on, but we need to trust in you, Father cast every care on you we need to lean on you we need to 
depend on you, Father. We need to just commit our ways, commit our works, commit the works of our hands, commit our situation, commit everything into your hand, Father. We won't need to get anxious and fretful and worried because you told us not to do it. You said, do not be anxious. So, Father, it's something that you don't want us to do, but, Father, what you really want us to do is to just trust you. And, Father, you said the God of peace, the God of peace will guard our hearts and our minds. And Father, we ask you for girding up of every heart right now, every mind, Father, any troubled spirit today, Father, any anxiety, any any worry, Father, any, any issues that are coming to overwhelm us, we rebuke that spirit. Satan will command you to loose your hold right now of God's people. Loose the, your hold of their hearts and mind. Their heart will not be troubled and their heart will not be afraid. I pray for the God of peace to surround every heart and every mind and every soul. I pray that, Father, you will anchor our heart, that you cover our heart, that you'll secure our heart, that we will not be troubled, that we will not be uh, fretful. But, Father, we will rest in you. We will trust in you. We will depend on you. Our confidence, Father God, is in you. So, Lord, we thank you that, Lord God, you release your peace today. Release your peace. Release your covering over every single situation that is seem surmountable, that seems overwhelming, any situation that's tried to blow itself out of proportion. Father God, we do not see, Father God, that, that thing as a mountain, but Father, you will level it. You told us we can speak to mountains. You told us that we can tell the mountain to be uprooted and cast into the sea. So Father, we cast every single thing that is surmountable in our lives, we we pray that you level it out, Father God, that yeah, you just level everything that's rising up, anything that will rise itself up, anything that will try to exalt itself above you, above your word. Father God, we know that, God, we have the power to pull down strongholds of the enemy, those mind-binding spirits of the mind that come to, 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 to trouble, uh, trouble us, Father God. We pull it down right now from every single heart and every single mind we tear down everything father god that enemies put up put in our way father we clear the way today father we say lord let 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 your let let father you said you come to, to set the captives free and to father god to let the those that are captive go free so we we pray that father any any stronghold any burden any thing in our lives father god that needs to be broken be, be broken now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we pray for total liberty we pray for total freedom father god we thank you for it now and we give you glory and praise father for what you're doing and what you continue to do and for, father we just commit father the rest of this service we thank you for each and every life and all those that are coming on we pray heavenly father that you'll speak to every heart, Father. We pray your spirit is already here. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We say thou art welcome in this place. We invite you and we say thou art welcome here. Father, we thank you for the word that will go forth this afternoon. We thank you that our hearts will be prepared to hear. And not only hear, but to, to be changed, hallelujah. Be changed from the inside out. Father God, we pray that, God, you will just do what you have to do, Father, to move us on to the next level. Move us on, Father God, as we continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of you, Father. We thank you for that. Thank you for the victory today. We say thank you, and we honor you, and we praise you for who you are and what you've done and what you continue to do. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, so good to have you guys uh, this afternoon. Welcome, Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> good to have you. Um, and uh, Tamara, just coming on, bless you. We give God thanks. So I hope everybody's had a great week. Um, I've had a great week as well. Uh, I know that... Um, you know that remember remember i said to you i was doing a, a bigger a big event 
um, where I was I was running a, a, a big like corporate event. I was I was the host for it, and uh, I just wanted to report back that thank you for your prayers. Um, God was so good. God, uh, He just removed the prayers, removed all my nerves. <laughs> oh, I was getting a bit a bit anxious, but God just covered. He just let the peace of God continue to rule my heart and mind. That's exactly what happened. And the nerves, they went and everything went well. And the, the whole conference was a success. The speakers were great. And, uh, you know, it was well attended. It had over 55 people online. And uh, it, there's loads of, like, questions. Lots of, had loads of positive feedback. So I just give God thanks that for what he's doing. God, God, God is an answer of, it, it answers our prayers. He certainly does. You know, what we cannot do in our own strength, God will give us his enabling power. You know what his enabling power is? His grace and his favor. God will give us his grace to do what we cannot do in our own strength. God will give us the ability. And sometimes, you know, when we call on God, he exceeds our expectation. So I'm just giving God thanks for that. It was an awesome day, awesome evening. So, um, so I'm thanking God for um, all of you. I know that all of you have got uh, testimonies. And if anybody wants to share anything, please feel free um, before Pastor Chris comes. Uh, this is your opportunity now to just share a testimony. Share something about the goodness of God. And uh, and uh, I know uh, there's always something to give God thanks for. The mere fact that you're breathing and the mere fact that you're alive, the mere fact that you're here and you're, you know, we're, we're, we're coming towards the end of this year, but God has kept us right throughout 2023. And, you know, we're coming towards the, um, the Christmas season and the close of the year, but we're going to end this year on a high. We're gonna end this year on a positive note. We're gonna, we're not gonna take our baggages with us into the next year. We're gonna leave our baggages behind, and we're gonna say bye bye, <laughs> bye bye to our sorrows, bye bye to our pain, and we're gonna move on, and and move on with God. We're moving forward. So, Rita, did you want to share a, a testimony? Well, I want, it's not sharing, it's just to ask my friends a bit of advice because I've made friends with a GP down here and I'm just worried about it because she means really well, but it's like she makes me this food, right? And it's like I've been worrying because I don't, you know, because I'm a kind person, I don't like to offend. But it, last time I went to a house, it's costing me £30, right? just to go get it. And then she's getting, you know what I mean? Grace, you live with me. You know how funny I am. And you you do your own thing when you come. I don't like, you get me. And that's why we probably could live together. It's like, I don't eat me. And I've never stopped you. Cause like you went and go get me. But she's, it's really worried me. I've tried to pray about it. This woman is making me lots of food and she's a nice person, right? But it's like, She's getting really offended and I don't, I'm being praying about it because, you know, it's like I like her food. But I said to her, don't make it, it's fine. Because I haven't got much freezer and I've just been worried and worried that I don't want to offend her because she said, well, that's not, you know, she said to me, what's your problem? Why don't you want me food? So I said, because I've, you live the, you live to, you live in the next place and, Last time I came to visit you, it cost me £30 in a taxi because, you know, it has. And every time I've been, I've only been twice. And she's from the Asian group. And I'm I'm worrying about it because she's quite nice and she's meaning well and she's, like, cooking. So I'm just asking you, friend, like, on the platform, what will I do? Because I've told her I don't want the food because, one, I'm decorating the whole of my kitchen. My house is upside down. So I get a call on Saturday. I'm on my way and I was like, no. So I've had to ask my decorator, pay him £15. He says he'll do it, but he hasn't done the bedrooms. And I'm like worrying about it. And I'm thinking, why don't I give this to my friends on the platform? 
she really means well, but I find it overwhelming because you live with me, Grace, when you know, you know you do your own thing. You never cooked for me, Grace, because you know me inside out. I know you, that you don't like my food. And I, you know, you just don't, basically, you don't, you, when you come here, you just chill out. You just do, get, make your own food, make your own tea. You just do what you want. And it's like, I'm a free, I am a free spirit. I'm feeling suffocated because this woman, I don't hardly know her. And she's making me feel terrible because she's cooked. And she went, well, I've been cooking for you half day. So I'm feeling really ungrateful because I like her food. I've con it. And then I went over to the garden centre on, you know, to see her. That cost me. She didn't bring it then. And she's driving me mad. She's going, why don't you want my food? What's the problem? Don't you like my food? I like her food. You know, I've just done like a bit of shopping now. I've got enough food, right, to laugh me. A food, I don't want to offend her. So it's it's been on my spirit. So I thought I'll ask everybody on the platform, what can I do? I've, if this decorator doesn't turn up tomorrow, I don't want to come into my house because my house is upside down. It really is. And I don't want to. Just, oh, I'll drop it off. I'm finding it overwhelming, you know, because I am a free spirit. You know, if I find that, like when I was working for the woman, Tracy, when I found when I find that people are pressurizing me or I feel suffocated, I just like I can't cope because one, I've just come out of depression, you know, and it's like I'm worrying about it because she's suffocating me, you know, and it's like she keeps going on and on that she's spent half the day cooking. I didn't ask her to do it. Mm. She's done it and she's a lovely person. Right. But she just keeps going on. That she's done it and she's making me feel very ungrateful. Mm. And I am not on a, I am the most kindest person. And I'm not very, you know, I'm 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 very grateful. I've just ordered her some flowers for the driver to go take her. You know, I've just done that. And I've ordered her a box of I don't really want her food because I ain't got anything there, but I don't want to offend her. So how would I, from a biblical perspective, I've tried, I've thanked her. But she's adamant on giving me this food and I want to take it. And I've got, I've cleared up all my freezer, but she's suffocating me. For, you might say it's a little thing, but it's like, I'm just feeling suffocated with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Rita, what we'll do, um, um, we'll pray that you, um, God will give you the courage to say, to let her know without her, without her being offended. That but she, I've said that, Grace, I've told her, I'm very grateful for your kindness and your love, but I'm okay, I've got my cupboards of full of food, mm -hmm. but she's not accepting it, she's a dryer, and I don't want her coming to my house, Grace, because it's like, my house is, at the moment, Grace, it's upside down, mm -hmm. you know, it's getting decorated, the kitchen's out, the bedroom, you know, everything's upside down, and. Uh, you know, she's just, I, and to me, I don't want to hurt anybody. Just gonna have to let her know that um that you're decorating, and you know you 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 know you, it's not convenient for her to come. You're gonna have to let her know because it's this is gonna go on and on. You're gonna have to let her know that you're in the middle of decorating. Unfortunately, it's not it's not convenient for you to come, and you uh, you know you know you, you don't you. You're, 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 I mean, if the decorator doesn't come tomorrow, he said he'll go pick it up. He's from my church. I said, I'll give you it. But I'm not going to pay £30 to the next village to go pick up food. Because, one, I can't afford it because it's like, that's just ridiculous. But I'm paying for her. And she's going, well, can't you, can't you? She's going, tell me what time these people are coming. Tell me what time they're going. And now, Grace, it's like I'm going to sort of walk away, you know, because I do that, Grace. You know me. I, yeah, but you're going feel... to you're gonna have to um, be firm. So, Rita, I'm going to pray that God will give you the grace right, okay. to be firm because you're going to have to say, you know, it's hard to say no, but you're going to have to say no. And God will, God will give you the grace. Father, we thank you 
for Rita, Father God. Right now, it's so difficult for her to say no. It's so difficult for her, Father God, to really, really just, uh, without being offensive, let people know that they're, they're, being, they're doing too much and it's, it can be suffocating for, um, for her. So, Father, we pray for Rita that you give her the courage, give her the strength. And Father, we pray for this other lady as well, that Father, she will not be offended and she will not be upset, but Father, she will give uh, Rita the space, what she needs. So Father, I pray that you will intervene in this situation. This, this is not a small situation, it can escalate, but Father, we pray that God, that, the, that this, this friendship will continue, but Father, it will not, um, it will not be, it will not be um, uh, offensive, uh, for any one of them, Father, because you are in the midst and you will make it possible, uh, Father, for this all to stop um, so Rita can just feel relieved, um, Father, and be able to um, get on with their life and move forward without having to be, feel pressured. So we thank you for that, God. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Grace. Amen. Thanks. It has been a worry for me because I... I'm a kind person. I don't like to offend anybody. Yeah, you'll be all right, Rita. You won't offend her. Uh, but I've, God tried will... it. I've phoned her twice and she's very offended. And I'm having to pay somebody money to go pick the food up. And I'm just stressed with it. And I'm thinking, no, you know... You'll be all right, Rita, because we've prayed now. And God will God will sort that out. You'll be, right. you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Right now, I'm going to introduce Pastor Chris to come. Uh, just welcome him as he comes. God bless you all. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Welcome, welcome everybody um, to another Sunday. I'm sure Grace has welcomed each and every one of you. And uh, we are thanking God this morning. In all, the Bible says, in all things, give God thanks. In all things, be anxious for nothing, but in supplication and with prayer, with thanksgiving, let's make our request be known unto God. And a God of peace, is there's always a God of peace that comes into the, in, into the middle of every situation that we get into, especially when we welcome him. And so it's not to get over concerned, but just commit it unto God in every situation. Uh, let, it, let it be known to you that God says, be still and know that I am God. So don't be agitated. Don't be agitated in your mind. Don't be agitated in your emotions. Be still and know that God is God. In other words, God's going to perform what he's promised to do. And so, uh, so, we give God thanks uh, to today, another Sunday. And uh, as I said, I welcome each and every one of you. We're going to allow God to continue to speak to us. Um, I know Grace um, handed uh, the platform over to me. But um, if there's anybody else that uh, you have a testimony or something that you want to share, please feel free to do so right now something that will encourage one another and strengthen one another in the lord please feel free to do so bless you bless you i'll just give you a, a few moments to compose yourself but if, if it's if it's if it's burning if you you know that you've something tangible has happened in your life recently and um you just want to give god thanks you know, the word of God says we overcome that old dragon, the devil, by the, the, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. The word of our testimony is the word. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so it's important that we share and uh, our testimony and put the devil to rights in terms of his uh, assigned um destiny <laughs> you can't get out of it it's a it's a done deal and that's the joy that i have that everything is a done deal as i re receive revelation of christ in me 
the hope of glory. I know that my footsteps are ordered of the Lord. Praise be to God. Fiona, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, afternoon everyone. Um, I, I, I'm not going to stay very long because I have, um, I'm doing something, but I just wanted to just give a testimony of how sometimes you, your, your, your life, you meet people and you can see God using them to speak to your heart, even in their own difficulties and yes. their distresses. And, um, I wanted to say that, um, God always knows who he meet. who the thing about us, we look around us and we think it has to be this person or it has to be this person or it has to be this person. But God knows that when he knits hearts together, he knows what he's doing in that mm -hmm. time. So um, a sister has been in distress and needed praying. She was praying for week for her child. And as the time's gone on, there's been prompts from the Holy Spirit to pray with her. And what I noticed in the praying that when I was going through the very hard times that I, I've been through in my own life with my own children, the tendency for me where I was under a lot of pressure, a lot of um, really, is this being taped, please, um, Pastor Chris, as well? Yes, it is. Um, shall, okay. I, shall I pause well, the tape? Um, it would be great if you could, yeah, because I think it might be easier to, than to say, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Fiona. Um, anybody else um, would like to share a testimony um, before we move on? Is there anybody else? Got a burning testimony? Something that God has done in your life and you say, to God be the glory? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Um, I'm not in an auction, so I can't go. I can't say going once, going twice, mm -hmm. going three times, and put the hammer hammer down, so to speak. So, but what I want to say is that never, never, if you you can, give up an opportunity to give God honor and glory and praise, because it comes back. The blessings of doing that comes back to you. In, in a favorable way and uh so i thank god um i know that the uh, junior has joined us and uh i'm just going to ask junior to um if he's in a position to um share uh music and uh, then i'm just going to come and uh just uh, share from the word of god in terms of what God has laid upon my heart. And so, Junior, if you're there, and if you're able to, um, okay, good. You see, just uh, if you could just minister a song um, that would uh, empower us and bless us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things have done. Um, I'm excited um, about what God is doing presently in my life and um it may impinge on the message in respect of what i'm going to share today but um it is important that all of us we understand our journey in life or we get to understand our journey you might not um, recognize it immediately but we go through certain things for a reason sorry yeah, we go through certain things for a reason. And so it's to monitor, assess your steps and know that, you know, that knowing that you're chosen of God, you're loved of God, that God allows certain things to um, happen in your life. And um, so we bless God this afternoon. And uh, so don't despair. You know, don't despair. And, the, you know, the word of God says, be not weary in well-doing, in doing good, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Don't quit on God because he never quits on you. He knows your assignment. So his assignment is out there before you all the time. 
And what he wants you to do is come into alignment to his will. And when you come into alignment to his will, when you come submit to him, in other words, you come under his mission for your life, God, you will see that there'll be a greater joy that you will experience. And the sense of purpose will, will just burst in your chest. You know, in the sense of, well, oh, thank God I'm not here just to suffer or go through hardship, but I'm here to establish the will of my Father, Almighty God, Jehovah. Jehovah, Rapha, my healer. Jehovah, Jireh, my provider. Hallelujah. So bless you. Um, just be encouraged this afternoon. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Junior, you ready with that song? Yep. Go ahead. No matter what you're going through. Hallelujah. My life is in your hand. Your life is in God's hand. Our lives are in God's hand. And um, that's a very appropriate um, song that you played, <laughs> uh, Junior. Very appropriate because it, um, it reflects very much on the the message today mm -hmm. praise your life is in god's hand mm -hmm. and um one of the things i've been doing of late is um reflecting on my life being in god's hand our lives grace and i our family life our family's life being in god's hand and recognizing that there are there are peaks and there are troughs. There are situations that seemingly don't look right, but God works it out for your good, uh, our good. And uh, it's, it's, it's fitting that, uh, as I said, that you should share that song this afternoon. So I, I'm just going to pray to pray um, a prayer for God's leading and his direction. It's something that has been placed on my heart and, uh, and he continues to speak to me. Our life is in his hand. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you for every person that is present here on this platform. Father, I thank you that this will not be a message that falls on deaf ears, but it'd be a message that will bring life, hope, and a sense of purpose and destiny, knowing that your sovereign will is continually over our lives because you love us. And Father, because of that, I pray that you will touch our hearts. And as we lean towards you, you are leaning already towards us and our hearts have been hoping to recede like a faucet, a water coming down and being contained in a glass or a bowl. We receive today what you have to say. And so I thank you, prepare our hearts. And Father, as we receive of your word, I pray that we will prosper in the areas that you have truly assigned for our lives. Have your own way. Be glorified, I pray. Holy Spirit, lead and direct. Bless, empower, invigorate, strengthen. Deliver, heal, set free. Make whole, make complete. Father, make our lives make sense to us and the things that we have been through. Enable us so that we will understand that you are at the elm of our lives. You are, you are 
the rudder, but you're also the wheel steering our lives, Father God. And so, Father, I thank you for that right now. In Jesus' mighty, mighty and matchless name, praise be to God. Yeah, um, what I want to share, um, I'm going to share something um, regarding the life of uh, Joseph. And I know that over a period of time, I've not really gone into it in real depth. And it may well be take two weeks to share it. I'm just going to sort of, as, as I would say, I'm just going to lay a foundation in God's word so that we can move on from there. But if I'd say our life, if the topic is our life is in his hand, that sums up what I'm going to share this afternoon. And I say to each and every one of you, your life is in God's hands. You've been fearfully and wonderfully made. Your very being, every fiber of your being, every tissue, every cell, every organ has been meticulously created by God. He knew, knew that when you were, he knew when you was going to be conceived in your mother's womb. He knew the very day, day and the time when you would be launched into this world. He, excuse me a second. So he knew the very time when we would be when you, each and every one of you would have been, would appear in this world. And so many of you may think, you know what? I'm not quite sure which direction I'm going in. I don't know where God is going to take me, but the most important thing that I've learned is this, is that where you put your will secondary to God's will for your life is that God will order your footsteps. When you put him first, he will direct your path. When he becomes Lord of your life, Christ becomes Lord, Lord of your life, he will supply to your every need. It might not be what you want, but to your every need. He will supply to your every need. You will not lack for anything concerning his will. Where there's misadventure, misadventure will turn into adventure. In other words, you, <laughs> you're on a journey that like, what? It's almost like being in a roller coaster. It's an adventure. You're on a ride. And you can't, oftentimes, you cannot even control that ride because you just have to flow with it. And if God gives you the stomach for the journey, which he does, then you just say, God, I'm in your hands. And you will reach some heights and you will reach some depths, but you're still in God's hand. And uh, <laughs> life is a beautiful thing when you, you know when God's hands is truly upon you. And you know what he says to you, speaks to you concerning your purpose and your future. And um, you might not embrace what the, the, the signals, those points in your life where things have happened, substantial things have happened in your life. You may not have understood the reason for it, but once you commit yourself in totality to God and God, one of the keys is, to be faithful to God, faithful unto him, and to characterize his person and his nature. That's the one thing, and that comes out of love, love for your fellow man, putting your fellow man, doing the best that you can. You know, not doing something heart-heartedly, being able to give your best in every situation. And it's one of the things that I've always, always said that I would do is that if I'm gonna do something, let me just go the extra mile just to do something. 
So at the end of the day, God, you will be well pleased. I'm not, got, I'm not, not looking for a reward coming back. In other, thing, in other words, something that is reciprocal in terms of what someone does for me, or shall I say what I do for someone, they're gonna do it back to me or gonna reward me accordingly. But my reward comes ultimately from God. And this is what I found. But the reward might not always be in a way that I want it to be. <laughs> and that is the uh, beauty of being on a journey when you're trusting God, because you're thinking, in your mind, you're thinking, I could well have done without that. And you could even say, cross is cross is, but you know, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And this is a fun, one thing I have come to know in terms of my relationship with God. Now, I'm gonna draw you to um, Genesis 37, and um, it's really um, surveying, or it's a study on the life of Joseph. And uh, I'm just gonna give you a background to this because This is my go-to scripture or passage of scripture in the Bible, because why? In my most extreme period or incident of rejection, and I say it wasn't up, up until the time, but what happened is that God before the incident would happen, God had prepared my heart. <coughs> um, you might say, how was that? Now, and I, some of you may have heard the story already, but the thing is, is when I was being in a church, I was at church then many, many years ago, our names were called out. But prior to that, and I'm not going to go into detail, but prior to that, God showed me and I read, and I've never done it before, and I've never done it since, being directed to a passage of scripture that um, was impressed upon me by the Holy Spirit. And I say that because even when I was reading, I say, why am I, why am I reading this? And I opened, as I was in that church that Sunday, amongst 400 people that I loved, appreciated, um, God directed me to Genesis 37. And I began to read about the life of Joseph. And uh, I read about all his scenarios that confronted him, all the, the situation with his brother, brothers. I read about the situation of sibling rivalry with his brothers, his, the dreams that he had. I read about how he was put into a, a um, cistern, or should I say a pit. Um, how from a pit, and when I say put into, he was thrown into a pit, shall I say, by his brothers, how slave traders came, he was sold into slavery, went into Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house, he was given, in Potiphar's house, he was given extreme favor. How that, uh, <laughs> to the point where, you could basically say, say he had the keys to the house, keys to every cupboard. In other words, he was given total control. How Potiphar had a wife, had a wife um, propositioned him to sleep with her and he refused. And because of his refusal, he um, was exposed as being someone that, um, attempted, or I'm going to say, quote, unquote, attempted rape on Potiphar's wife. It was a lie. He was thrown into prison. 
in prison. He was there. He was met in, he was given charge over the prison. He was exposed to two people um, who were subjects of Pharaoh, which is a butler and the baker. And uh, they had a dream. He interpreted a dream. He then, having interpreted it, he then, they, they, the, these, the butler and the baker was released from prison to meet their fate. One was beheaded, <laughs> they were, one kept their position. Prior to that, he had asked for them to remember him in prison, obviously being falsely accused. Um, at the appointed time, Pharaoh had a dream, asked for an interpretation. The interpretation he could not receive from any of his courtiers, um, whether it's the magician's advisor, he couldn't get the answer. But then he, the butler remembered him. And uh, so he was summoned out of prison into the presence of Pharaoh. He interpreted a dream and then he was given a responsibility that was second in command to Pharaoh to oversee the affairs of the whole of Egypt. And uh, it's a powerful, powerful, read and i read this up until the point where um pharaoh said remember i am pharaoh remember i am pharaoh so having given him a ring on his finger and identified him as the only man that could minister his fear he said remember that i am pharaoh but he became prime minister of the whole of egypt and at that point um, my name was called, our names were called, and what proceeded was words that I couldn't recognize. They were beautifully scripted by the tongue, by the heart. And in the midst of that, I received um, a devastating sentence we received a devastated sentence upon the both of us in that we were not to be, the, the congregation was not to have any more contact with us. We would not, they were not to be found outside our house or even <laughs> whether a phone call or whatever the case might be. And you can imagine uh, amongst people that I love, my heart was in pieces. And reality, in, in, this is a reality, it was in pieces that I was shattered by the whole thing. It's, there's never been a worse hurt in all my life. And anything, anything, any other thing pales into insignificance because why? Because it's your brothers. You trust them, brothers in Christ. You believe for the very best. And you believe that they have your best interests at heart. And yet, by virtue of that sentence, damning sentence over our lives, it was meant to destroy us. And thank God it didn't. And so I say all that because I really wanted to get in, lay a foundation and allow you to understand this, that God, God doesn't reveal things for you. Re revealed things to you just because it it's nice <laughs> you don't have dreams or you don't have visions you don't receive a message a prophetic message because it sounds nice being that it's from god it's it's for a reason and it, it's a reason there's a reason to propel you into divine destiny and purpose of our Almighty God through our Savior Jesus Christ. And I, uh, one of the things I love about God is that He's never failed me yet. And uh, you can 
map your journey through life and say, God, I can see what you were saying. This is a journey that you set me on. This is a path that you set us on, Grace and I. And Father, we ought to be attentive to what you're saying at every point, at every junction, at every stop. We ought to be aware of what the message is. And I'm saying this for each and every one of you. Don't ever look at your life and think, well, I'm just waiting to come to the end of my life and may, well, not maybe, but yeah, I get into heaven and that's it. There is something that God wants you to do that will make a difference. And I'm not saying that you have to turn the whole world upside down, but I'm saying to you, because God is your daddy, God is your father, and God will speak to you in a certain way that you will understand him. And uh, I know that Junior is going through fatherhood at this moment. He's got a little one. And he may be using a language that is not the language that he will use to adults, but a language to his baby that at the end of the day, the baby will look to interpret his, what I say, babbling or whatever the case might be. Whatever. And, uh, but there was a response that what I noticed is that I'm trying to remind myself of my fatherhood, uh, growing up the children. There was, there's baby language that you would speak to them and they will seem to respond to it accordingly. And, uh, and that's the thing. God will speak to us in a way that we respond to it accordingly. And so there's a lot of lessons to be learned through the life of Joseph. And uh, so I, I thought about it and, um, and I just want to read. And it may be that I'll park the bus at some point as we go on this journey because there's so many lessons to be learned. And uh, verse one says, so Jacob what is um, Genesis 37. And I'm reading from verse one. And I'm, I might just skip out a few passages, but I'm, I'm going to park. But then there is a, there's a lesson that I'm going to extract. So Jacob, that is Israel, lived in the land where, the, where his father, Isaac, had been a stranger, a sojourner, a resident, an alien in the land of Canaan. So he's in the land of Canaan. So at this point in time, they're in the land of Canaan. And so I would imagine being in the land of Canaan that the blessing has gone down from Abraham to Isaac you know when they they built the wells and such forth and uh, you know even and uh, they experienced more than enough because even where Isaac anywhere Isaac went and he dug those wells so he opened up the wells where um, Abraham had previously dug there was water there. So even in the midst of dispute about this is, uh, you know, the people, the people of that land saying, this is our land, it doesn't matter. And the most important thing is to know this. If God's hand is upon you, it doesn't matter what of the, about the challenges that are around you. If God before you, no principality, no power, no devil, no demon, no man, no woman, no situation, no circumstance can be against you because God has ordered and he is ordering your footsteps. And as you trust him, God continually makes provision for his plan for your life. And that is so important. And so here is in the land of, they're in the land of Canaan and he speaks about the generation of Jacob now. And it says, Joseph, verse two, Joseph, when he was 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. And so let me say something here. I never read that before. I can't remember reading that to, before, that Joseph was actually shepherding the flock with his brothers. <laughs> I read that today. I thought, oh. So I, if I forgot that important detail because shepherding is very important to governing. When you're governing sheep, 
when you're a steward over a sheep, you are shepherding. And it's something that David went through. The young boy David went through at a young age. We don't, it doesn't say what age David was when he was in the field shepherding his father's cattle, but he was learning experience, experiences of governing, of government that would enable him to be all that God would call him to in the future. Here, Joseph was doing the same thing. God doesn't do things by halves. He does it because there is a reason for it. You have to recognize this. There is a reason for what you encountered during your life. So Joseph, when he was 17 years old, he was shepherding the flock with his brothers. And he mentions all the brothers there who are in, in respect, the brothers in respect to their mothers. And it emphasizes that there were secondary wives. And Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I didn't remember reading that part as well. He brought back a bad report. Now, I'm not saying that he snitched on them. In other words, I'm just saying he was there for a reason. So the reason being he is there shepherding, but also he was mindful of his father. And being that he may have lo loved his father to the point where, you know, obviously there was a distinction between him and the rest of the brothers, as it uh, obviously, as you read on, it's evident. But he brought back a bad report. So we put that one, we shelved that one for now. So if you know, if you've been in, in if you have a family and, uh, you, one of your siblings, whether be sister or brother, brings back a bad report to your mother or your father, you take note of it. You think, nah, that one. Always, uh, <laughs> I remember Grace uh, often saying to me, uh, and uh, I use Grace as an example, <laughs> saying to me that uh, there's 10 years between her and her sister. Um, and uh, when she used to sneak out of the house <laughs> and with her other sister that is three years younger than her and they would go and visit at a church it wasn't something that was damning but it was a it wasn't in that day it was is a no-go area you can't go wander off into other territories you have to keep to your own flock so to speak so what would happen is that she would say my uh, younger sister who's <laughs> wouldn't keep her mouth shut so when she went when she went back home she would uh, and she was asked the question where have you been she said oh i went with i, I went with my sister grace and uh, and uh, her so to speak to this church or that church or this function and it's big big trouble <laughs> big big trouble i won't even say what trouble but big big trouble for the both of them you see, and you make a note of it. And so obviously over the years, uh, Grace has mentioned this. So I know that it's <laughs> it's been embedded in our heart and our mind regarding what her sister did to, did to her, you see. So she was weary about her sister. And I'm saying to you that these things happen. And uh, it says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because and this is verse three because he was the son of his old age and he made him a distinctive multi-colored tunic his brothers saw that their father loved joseph more than all of his brothers and so they hated him and could not find it within themselves to speak to him on friendly terms and I'm saying to you this, is that maybe you haven't been in a, in a family where there's sibling rivalry, but there may have been, you may have noticed that if there was a little favoritism towards um, your brother or your sister, it may register in your heart and you think, mm, 
mm, that should have been me. That's jealousy or envy. Oh, I would love that. Mm, I would love that. I love the same treatment, envy. Jealousy is like, that should have been me. That's mine. And so what happened is that the multicolored coat was a symbol of, um, it was a symbol of favor in terms of this is to, so it recognizes you as the older person. So it's something that ultimately should have been given to the old eldest son, but seemingly this was given to Joseph. And so it's like, I can imagine the brother saying, who does he think he is? It, this guy, he snitches on us. Then he receives a coat from his father and, and, and uh, he receives favor and everything. I, in other words, they couldn't even have it in their heart to think good things or good thoughts towards Joseph because here it is, it's obvious favoritism because that should have been mine. And um, in reality, I've uh, experienced some of that in my own family. Let me just say that. I, re I, re I have experienced a lot of that because even to this day, a lot of things are said and you might say it's said casually, but you know what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, out the overflow. And so things like, oh, he always had special treatment. He could go down to the shop and buy Uncle Ben's rice and we used to have to eat the ordinary rice. <laughs> In other words, whether it be brown rice or whatever. Okay. But I liked it separated, the, the grains separated, you see? And so I don't know what it was. I didn't see it as favoritism. I just felt like that's the way it was. And so um, I was able to get away with a lot of things in that if I asked for it, I received it. I didn't know that these things would still register. And, and these things register. It does, age doesn't make you forget things. It's your heart, attitude of forgiveness and love that makes you forget things. And so you recognize that you could be into your uh, advancing years whether it be 50, 40, 50, 60. And these things are still echoed. And you think, uh -uh, what's this? <laughs> so be aware. Be aware. And it says, his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all his brothers. So they hated him and could not find it within themselves to speak to him on friendly terms. Now Joseph dreamed a dream. That's another thing now. Now you're dreaming dreams. Now the boy is dreaming dreams. <laughs> now Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. What? So it's like you say, you, you always, you're not your brother's favorite. And then you're saying, look, you know what? I've got a job. And uh, now the job that I'm getting, it's, uh, or should I say, I've had a promise, a promise of getting a job or apprenticeship or something. And I thought, and they were probably, are you, are you getting that? We never had that privilege or whatever. Huh? What's going on? And they say, ah, you're just a dreamer. You're just a dreamer. Ah, it's rubbish. And they will be dismissive of you. And, uh, but it's not only that he dreamed a dream, but it's what the dream spoke of and he says and he said to them please listen to the details of this dream which i have dreamed so he said please listen to the details obviously they didn't want to hear nothing from him and you you can i don't want to hear nothing i don't want to hear nothing you have to say <laughs> and uh even that will be echoed and i'm sure some of you are thinking hmm, i recognize some of that behavior hmm. You see, what it is, the enemy is very divisive. And he, what he does, he wants to destroy relationships to a point of putting, it, putting you to death. And you might say, no, it could never happen. Well, trust me, it can happen. And it does happen. And he said to them, please listen to the dream, the details of this dream, which I have dreamed. 
we brothers were binding sheaves of grain stalks in the field and lo my sheaf suddenly got up and stood upright and remained standing and behold your sheaves stood all around my sheaf and bowed down in respect his brother said to him are you actually going to reign over us are you really going to rule and govern us as your subjects so they hated him even more <laughs> so the more information he shared the more they let me say this as a caveat it's not everybody you can talk to it's not everybody you can share your dreams with because they're dream stealers in other words they will murder your dream in other words <laughs> they'll look to um destroy your purpose and so you have to be careful in who you share things with and whether um joseph did it as a boast or he was just so innocent that he couldn't see that it was he was just agitating and winding them up to a point where they would even consider killing him that's deep that is deep and i'm saying to you we have to as much as um joseph shared his dreams maybe he didn't have the wisdom but i always say this when god's providence is upon you god will allow you to even make mistakes that will work in your favor <laughs> it will work in your favor so don't be hard on yourself and beat yourself up and say i wish i'd never done that this is an area in my life where i should have kept my mouth shut i shouldn't because what when you're assigned by god there's certain things god is not looking for perfection from you he's just looking for he's looking for you to love him so there's something it doesn't see you don't see it here in the early scriptures but there's something about joseph that is, evidently is unique the way he approaches things and he says and he goes on and he says in verse um eight his brother said to him are you actually going to reign over us as you really are you are you really going to rule and govern us as your subjects so they hated him even the more for telling them about his dreams and for his arrogant words so the amplified would say arrogant words but joseph dreams still another dream so you would have thought one dream is enough he goes and dreams another dream now this is this is taking the biscuit now this is okay. this is a real right this is a real wind up now and so sometimes you speak to people when they're not receptive maybe you just need to take a backward step because that's not the audience you should be speaking to god can speak to you about something and you have to know who you can share it with because it's not everybody and the people that you think are your friends could actually turn around and be your worst enemy or those people that are the closest to you that you share this they could be your worst enemy so you have to be careful and if it is the will of god 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 may constrain you just to blurp, blurp it out but be wise in the event and know that is god that's ordering your footsteps but um so he says but verse nine but joseph dreamed still another dream and told it to the brothers as well and he said see here i have again dreamed a dream and lo the time i saw a this time I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowed down in respect to me. He, he told, so this is obviously because he's 12 brothers. And so they're, so they're always also reflecting on the fact that the 11 brothers are bowing down to the one who is him. And, but he says he told, to his, told it to his father as well as to his brothers but his father rebuked him and said to him in disbelief what is this what is the meaning of this dream that you have dreamed shall i and your brother and your brothers actually mother and your brothers actually come to bow down to the ground in respect before you joseph's brothers were envious jealous and jealous of him but his father kept the words of joseph in mind 
wondering about their meaning. And so, why am I sharing this? Because there are things that you should speak at the appointed time. And I believe that, and, it, and th th there is, what is a favorable time? If God constrains you, if God leads you to do something, if God, in fact, if God leads you to do good and your evil is spoken of, then what can you do? You can't stop from doing what God has called you to do. And you have to continue to do that because God is a just God. He will deliver you from your enemies. He will make an escape route for you. And you might say, well, if I remember this uh, passage of scriptures, it didn't look like it, but there was an expected end and it came from God. And so it speaks about um, uh, um, Joseph being sent again on an assignment. And this time is an assignment that he should go and find his brothers and uh, whether it was to see if they were all right or the system he was sent. Anyway, verse, uh, seven, Seventeen says, first sixteen says, he said, I am looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing our flocks. Then the man said they were here, but they have moved on from the, this place. And I've heard them say, let us go to Dauphin. So Joseph went after his brother and found them at Dauphin. Now Dauphin is from the place where he expected them to see expected to see them they had moved on uh, another 12 miles or so and so this shows the the diligence and the commitment that joseph had and i'm talking about your footsteps being ordered a lot he was faithful to do what his father instructed him to do so he was obedient so he could have said you know what i'm it's like sheep going into a wolf's den you know because he already recognized that his brothers hated him. And he could have said, you know what? I can't be bothered with this. I'm gonna return back home. Where I can, where I'm, I could just say to my, my dad, you know what? I couldn't find them where you said, where, and where I thought they would be, they weren't there. But he was diligent, he was committed. And this is an attitude that continued in, continually be, was demonstrated in Joseph's life is that he was faithful to do what he was instructed to do and he gave his very best. And so God obviously saw that even before he was doing that, there was something in his attitude that God loved because in, in, invariably, even as God spoke to him, he may have felt, well, I don't even understand the dream, but this is what I'm gonna share. It was he knew that God would protect him. And I'm talking about a relationship here where you know that even when those people that are even are dearest and closest to you, it may even be your work colleagues, whoever it might be, family members or friends, when they come against you or when they try to diminish your purpose, you know that there is a God that will lift you up. There's a God that will affirm you. There's a God that will continually be with you and for you. And this was the important thing with um, Joseph is that it doesn't even mention in the early, early scriptures here, but he had a relationship with God that he knew, that he knew, that he would knew. I believe so, that God was with him and God was for him. And God would affirm it later on. And he says... Uh, so as he was going uh, to, as he was going to Dauphin now, and when it says the verse 18, it says, and when they saw him from a distance, even before he came close to them, they plotted to kill him. That's his brothers. They plotted to kill him. It doesn't matter what happens. The devil might plot to kill you but when you're in the will of, when you have received revelation and this is why it's so important to keep your eyes focused on the lord keep your eyes focused on jesus keep your eyes focused on doing good walking 
in right relationship with God. God will not withhold any good thing from them that walk uprightly. And you might say, is that every tread, I, every step I take, every move I make, it might not seem like it, but God is still with you and God is for you. And I'm saying to you, you might be at your lowest hebb at the moment. You might not be emotionally. You might be spent. In other words, mentally, you might be spent. In other words, you may be stretched emotionally and mentally. And you're thinking, I can't take this anymore. This thing that is coming against my life is too much. God is saying, just keep on keeping on. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing. I'm working and I'm orchestrating your path. You know, there's many things that we have been through, Grace and I, and you know what? It might not have started off right, but it sure ended right in respect of what God had set aside for us. And you know what? It doesn't, you know, one thing Paul said, and I love that scripture, he said, I know what it is to abound. I know what it is to be abased. I know what it is to have plenty, and I know what it is to have nothing. But this one thing I know, that I can do all things through Christ, who continues to strengthen me according to his will and purpose for my life. And that's the important thing that we should all hold on to, is that God's promises are yea and amen and so be it. So whether Joseph was, he had asked God for, give me understanding of this, because I know that later on, when he didn't understand something, he, he gave honor to God and said, this is, not my, this is not my gift to say that I can interpret dreams, but I know that God is an interpreter of dreams. So he received that revelation at some point. He received it at some point. And so what I'm saying to you, as God brings things into your life that affirms you and confirms you, take note of them, because if they're God done it once. He can continue to do it and strengthen you. Don't forget the promises of God that have been spoken of your life, that you've dreamt, you receive supernaturally. There's been tangible evidence that God has brought something your way to say, God, you remembered me. You remembered me. You've got to understand that. These are things that I've built my relationship on things that god has done in my life when i didn't know what to do i didn't know a scooby-doo about what to do i just trusted god and god supernaturally opened the doors of opportunity for me to do something that was like beyond my wildest dreams and i say wildest dreams because i've done things that ordinarily don't make sense to ordinary folks but god is faithful and uh, what happened is that has, even before Joseph approached the brothers, they saw him afar off and they plotted to kill him. Kill him. That's, that's deep, isn't it? You want to kill your brother? <laughs> Hallelujah. They said to one another, look, here comes this dreamer. And now then come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits, cisterns, underground water storage. Then we will say to our father, a wild animal killed him and devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Remember I said there can be dream stealers, dream killers. <laughs> dream killers. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to kill your dream. Don't counsel with any and everybody. There are dream killers out there. And see, God knows. If God has spoken to you, God will keep it. God will keep you to the very end. Jesus himself is the author and he's the finish of your faith. He's the one that began your faith and your trust in him. And he's the one that will complete it to the end. So keep on keeping on. It doesn't matter how extreme it looks. It may look impossible in from a natural perspective, but God is able. It doesn't matter what com situation confronts you. It may be unpleasant, but God still can make a way of escape. He's still able. He's well able. And so he says, um, now, 
verse 21. Now Reuben, the eldest, heard this and res rescued him from the hands and said, let us not take his life. See, God will select somebody. There may be one person that will stand up for you, but that one person is enough to avert, <laughs> avert the consequences upon your life. In other words, it's already a done deal. Yes, we're going to kill him. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He's not going to kill me. He's not going to take me out. And I can give many examples of that, but I won't on this occasion. But, and it says, there must be one. Reuben said to them, do not shed his blood, but instead throw him alive into the pit that is here in the wilderness and do not lay hands on him to kill him. He said this so that he could rescue him from them and return him safely to his father. Now, in his heart, Reuben had his best, Joseph's best interests at heart. And you, and you will find that God will select someone who will reach out, either reach out the olive branch or re give, give you a stick so that he can pull, pull you out of that mire. There will be somebody. But here it is. That, that, now, when... Verse 23, now when Joseph reached his brothers, they stripped him of his tunic, this distinctive multicolored tunic, which he was wearing. Then they took him and threw him into the pit. Now the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And someone might say, well, it's a pit. Well, if there's a pit and there's no water in there, there might have been some other creepy crawlers in there. There might have been snakes in there. Someone already alluded to that um, last week, that there were perhaps snakes in the pit and you had to, you had to learn how to um, jump over them so that he may maintain his life. You see, sometimes you have to avoid certain pits because inside them, there are things that will look to destroy you even further, unknown to you. And so don't get yourself in a, in a situation where you're entangled in the yoke of bondage. In other words, you get yourself into a place where you know that you're not doing the right thing. You know you're not trusting God. You know you're doing it on your self-effort. But yet, when a situation comes, if God isn't there, you can be smitten. Even by the fall, dropping the person into a pit he didn't climb down in a ladder you know he was dropped in a pit <laughs> god preserved him god will preserve you in the midst of your trouble he will preserve you then verse 24 says and they they took him and threw him into the pit now the pit was empty and there was no water in it then they sat down to eat their meal when they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gil Gil Gilead with their camels bearing laudanum resin for perfume and balm and mir, going on their way to carry the cargo down to Egypt. Judah said to the brothers, what do we gain if we kill our brother and cover, him, cover up his blood? Come, let us instead sell him to those Ishmaelites and Midianites and not lay our hands on him because he is our brother, our flesh. So his brothers listened to him and agreed. And then the Midianites and the Ishmaelite traders were passing by. The brothers pulled Joseph up out of the, up and lifted him out of the pit and they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And so they took Joseph as a captive into Egypt. Egypt. So Joseph was now a slave, bound, shackled, taken into Egypt. For what? Out of envy and jealousy. The devil. You think the devil never listened to the um, the vision and the dream? Listen to the dream. Of course, the devil listened to it, and he said, "No way, no how is that happening." 
I'm not saying the devil interpreted it, but from the sounds of it, it sounds like this person's going to be a ruler. No way. The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus, <clears throat> and we know the scripture, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, life in full. There's a place that Christ is taking you to that is in heavenly places in Christ. It's in him. It's a place of authority. It's a place of power. It's a place where you make a difference. This is what was happening to Joseph. He was being taken to a place where he would make a difference. And uh, if we go down, he was sold. Jo Joseph was sold to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and a captain of the royal guard. Verse 36 of uh, chapter 12. And I'm just going to, um, I'm going to say this to you, is that, and I'm just going to read on a little because it talks about the favor that was upon Joseph. And I want you to understand that even though you will go through many things, it doesn't mean that the favor of God has departed from you. When things happen, it might be incidents or accidents happen in your life. It may be things that you justifiably, you're innocent of, but it happens in your life. Know this, that there is a God of justice and there's a God of mercy and there is a God of love, love. He will vindicate you. Let me say that. He will vindicate you. But what it is, your attitude towards those things will determine how he vindicates you and how he elevates you. And so there is something about Joseph that speaks of his character and his nature. And it's and verse chapter 93, and I'm going to finish soon. Chapter what? Uh, sorry, chapter 39 of Genesis. 39? Yeah. And he says. What verse? Verse 1. And it says, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the royal guards, brought him, brought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So here it is, he's taken, and he's taken as a slave, but even in his enslavement, he's still prospering. And, what, and let me read on. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper, succeed in his hand. Let me say something. How do you know that a person is prospering? How do you know he's prospering? He knew that the Lord had prospered him. He's an Egyptian. He's not a Christian. He's not, a, he's, he's not an Israelite. He's an Egyptian. They worship other gods idols yet he recognized the prosperity that came through joseph i i like to say this that joseph declared his love for god his love for jehovah he shared he, he was passionate about his god that even though he was a slave, or in this sense, a servant, though Potiphar saw something on him that said, man, you can go for all that and still thank your God. You can still praise your God. You can still love your God. You might not see it written there, but how does, the, how does a, um, an Egyptian officer know that he's, he's prospering? How does he know that God is with him? <laughs> there's something that he declares from his heart he's declaring the goodness of God in spite of all that he's been through he's declaring God's grace his mercy and his love there is something in all things give God thanks 
I'm just intimating this because you can't see God's favor through your natural eyes. The man looked like it would have gone to him like a slave, looked like a slave, but there was something that he saw. And um, so here is it, he says, now the master saw the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper. Signs, wonders, and miracles. When you have the right attitude of heart, God will still favor you. God will take you into places that you never thought you would um, be taken. God will shower his favor on you in the midst of people that are around you. You will stand out because there's something that you, you dare to declare and that you love Jesus. You love the Lord. You love the Father. There's, some, there's a praise in your lips. Mm. There's thanksgiving as unto God. There is a testimony of God's goodness. He would have been testifying. You know what? I was thrown into the pit for dead. But thank God I'm here. Amen. Thank God I'm here Amen. in your house. Amen. A house of an officer, the Amen. house. And I can see your opulence Amen. and your wealth. Thank God I'm here. Amen. And the Bible says this in verse 4. So Joseph, please Potiphar. And found favor in his sight. And he served him as his personal servant. In other words, he went beyond the call of duty. Hallelujah. When you're in prison, in your situation, in your grief, when you're down, are you going to be able still to give your best and to serve? When someone says things disparate, in other words, wrongful, horrible things about you, are you going to be able to give a good word back, a word of encouragement, a word of strength? <laughs> Maybe not, but it takes the love of God to be able to do that. There was something about Joseph. So Joseph pleased, he pleased Potiphar. He could have just done his work without pleasing it, but he pleased. He went beyond the call of duty as a personal servant. He was a, per his a personal attache. His personal secretary. It was everything to Potiphar. Hallelujah. And what is he saying? He made Joseph overseer over all over his house, and he put all that he owned in Joseph's charge. So Joseph was like the lord of the house. <laughs> he's in charge now. You know he's. He's strutting around and thinking he's, he's a big man. He's, he's a big man. He's there laying under couches and the chaise lounge and, and he's drinking and he's he's cool. He's cool because he has favor with his master. When you are in a position, are you giving your best? Are you giving your best at work? Are you giving are you being a blessing to the person that has cursed you? Or are you being a, a blessing to the person that is over you? Or are you thinking, ah, these people, man, they make me sick. I can't do what I want to do. I mean, in other words, your attitude. The important thing about Joseph was his attitude. His attitude. It's something that I've learned a long time ago. It doesn't make, matter what position somebody's in. Be a servant. Be loving, be caring, be hospitable to strangers, it says in, in the scripture, but more so to the household of faith. Be host, host them, accommodate their needs as you see them. Go beyond the call of duty. That's what David, that's what Joseph did. And God saw all of that. And so God was preparing him to be an over, overseer of something that was far greater. God will do that. It happened that from time to time that he made Joseph overseer in his house, put him in charge over all that he owned, and that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house because of Joseph. So that the Lord's blessing was on everything that Potiphar owned. 
in the house and in the field. You know that you can, your attitude can be a blessing to other people, a blessing to their business, a blessing to their house, a blessing to the ministry, a blessing to whatever area you are placed in, you can be that blessing. In other words, you're the one, because of the grace that is upon you, you're the one that is making a difference in that company, in that institution, in that church, in whatever environment you're placed in, God is making an example of you. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and come to glorify the Father. That's exactly what Joseph was doing. God wants you to shine like a beacon wherever you go. Amen. And when you're shining like a be beacon, God is saying like, what? what I, I'm heaping favor upon you. And you'll find that things will come to you out of your ability to just serve. Jesus was a perfect servant. The disciples asked him, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Jesus said, the one that is servant of all, that is a slave of all. Joseph was that a slave of all. He was that servant of all. Jesus spoke and said that Joseph was a perfect example. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. There is something that we can learn from this account. There's something. And I've learned a lot from this account. From the time God spoke to me those 30 odd years ago, I've learned so much that I don't become, I'm not competitive. I'm not in competition with anybody. I just know, God, your hands is upon me. Yeah, you experience things. Of course you do. But you have to know that ultimately it's through the grace and the love of God towards you, towards me. And so verse six, so, so Potiphar left all that he owned in Joseph's charge. And with Joseph there, he did not need to pay attention to anything except the food he ate. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to, because there's so much. But let me say this. Your faithfulness is important. If you're faithful in little, God will make you ruler over much. Don't ever think that what you're doing is futile. It isn't going to amount to anything. It might. Delay is not denied. It will come in its season. Things will come in its season. And I pray that you will see your season. Even now, you will see it. Don't, don't give up on God. God has not given up on you. He's not given up on you. And I just want to encourage you this afternoon read about Joseph. It's, it's a great example of servitude, servanthood, giving, good attitude. <laughs> it could have been, <laughs> let me say something. One might say he would have a right to be cussing his misfortune. There's no such thing as luck. Luck is a demonic term. Your One's footsteps are ordered of the Lord. Even the unsaved, God knows them. He knows the end of their life from the beginning. God knows there's nothing about luck. You can't surprise God. God is not a fortune teller. God knows. So there's when that's, that's a word that is bantered about through unsaved people. Oh, I was really lucky, you know, Dwight, because they won a million pounds. Someone's got to win it. Someone's playing football. Oh, they're really lucky they got, they're footballers. Well, someone's got to play football. There are market forces that dictate that people earn a lot of money. It doesn't mean they're blessed. They just earn a lot of money. Blessed is know that you're in the divine and perfect will of God. That God, you're used, being used as an instrument of God, as a conduit for his love. That's what blessed is. It is evident in Joseph's life 
that it was being prepared for a greater glory. And so I thank God for his life. I thank God. And I pray that you've received something today. You know, have the right attitude. You know, it, when people, you see, it, when I read about Joseph, I don't see a bad attitude there. He might have been, when he was young, 17, he might have been a bit brash and, you know, he spoke out. But as he continued, it just seemed like he became wiser. As he grew up, he became wiser in his choice of words and his actions, you see, and we should grow in wisdom. The Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. Don't, in other words, don't hold back, ask God, God will give it to you. God is a loving and he's a gracious and he's a merciful God. And I, I wish I could share more, but time, and I just bless God for the word. Read the life of Joseph. It's mm. such an inspiring book. God, in my worst period of my life, <laughs> I could say, in something that was going to prevail in my life, God had warned me before ahead of time. How good is God? And God has born out given birth to a lot of things that i read about even in joseph's life there are things that has happened in my life that i could say to god be the glory it's preparation grace often asks are we still in the pit <laughs> i said no no we left the pit <laughs> hallelujah I, I can laugh because, you know, you go through a situation, you think, left for dead. <laughs> Am I being left for dead? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I laugh because I know of many incidences where people have written us off. <laughs> Sorry. And we're, still, we're still alive. We're still here. We're still alive. <laughs> if there, look, there's so much that God has shown me. And when I say my footsteps are ordered of the Lord, I can openly declare it. It is ordered of the Lord. And I see, I see it from, from the time I was a child growing up, how God would, God's favor would be upon my life. Even though I didn't know, even when I didn't know God, I wasn't fully acquainted with God. God's favor was upon my life. That even my, siblings would see that and notice it even from that time <laughs> even to this time they're still like recognizing it and it's like lord have mercy <laughs> but you have to love you have to love I, look i'm no, no, let me not say but there's a lot that i can relate to because god god is perfect in all his ways he knows what to do at the given point to give you something that will comfort you in years to come and that's the comfort the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path the word of god when god gives you a word and he gives you the word revelation you receive revelation of it it's a comfort to you and so bless you each and every one i just want to pray right now and pray that even as god has spoken he would have spoken to every one of you. I don't mm -hmm. care if you don't understand, you never heard it, you ain't clear, whatever. He's spoken to everyone. God is not well, no respect as a person. He will speak. Mm -hmm. But because he's speaking from a perspective from his glory, you might think, nah, that's too much. That's way, way beyond. God will, God will impress things on your heart. And in your mind, you think, no, nah, no, nah. I, I ain't even in that position. So how can that happen? Let me tell you something. How can God take somebody who's in London, who lives, well, at the time, in a two-bedroom house, how can he take someone from London, elevate him, even paved the way for him 
miraculously without no money to go to Kenya to do meetings where God confirms his favor upon you, affirms his favor and confirms it upon you, where there's signs, wonders, and miracles, people are getting healed, that there is a good report when all the past, and, we're, and you're ministering to the biggest denominational church in Kenya. The, I didn't even know it at the time, but you you made a leader of a group and you're ministering and you just see God just move miraculously. Deliverance, healing. And then the, there's a seminar. Uh, should I say there's a appraisal of the what has happened throughout the trip. trip. And it's a praise report. How so many lives have been affected. And then a complete stranger comes up to you. <laughs> and he said, never even saw him during the during the time I was ministering, he just comes up to you and says, I would love for you to come back to Kenya in four months time, but bring with you a team. <laughs> even at that time, as he's saying it, I said, you don't even know how I got here. I got here on a, through a miracle. It's gonna take up, I'm thinking this, but he's talking to me and I'm thinking he wants me to bring a team. So said, so done. I went back four months later and four months later, with the very, with a, team. with a team, paid, God blessed the business, started the business, started to grow within a short space of time. This is favor of God. Supernaturally, we're there. And when we arrive, at that airport, we don't know what to expect. All I know is this, is that what God had showed me beforehand, what came out of my spirit the first time when I was on that plane and I saw, I was gonna use a term, Muzungus, which is white men um, in Africa. I saw them on the plane. I said, what are you, where are you going? And they said, they're going to Tanzania. I said, what are you doing going to Tanzania? And they said, we're going to minister to the Maasai. And out of my spirit, there was a gush that came out of my, my mouth. And I said, I would love to minister to the Maasai people. God had already set me up. <laughs> and you know what? Four months later, that's exactly what happened. I was ministering to the Maasai people. I can't remember if Grace was with me at the time, but I remember this from humble beginnings. We ministered the Maasai people under trees. Yeah, was there. You, Grace was there. We ministered under trees. That was their church. <laughs> I'm telling you something. No building. No building, no, no padded seats, no thrones. <laughs> sat on the floor. We sat on the floor. Under, grass. under a tree. Under a tree. <laughs> and we reached out to hundreds and hundreds of Maasai. Yeah. God is a good God. Yes, he is. I'm telling you, and um, the rest is history mm -hmm. that will be shared another time. But I'm telling you, when God orders your footsteps, he does it. And that came as a result of the rejection. Mm -hmm. That came as a result of God steering me to the book of Joseph. To the um story. Past, the story of joseph god orders your footstep beyond what you would expect and he's mm -hmm. still doing it up until this day and you know god is just telling me the best is yet to come it isn't finished you know so i'm thankful i'm thankful for his goodness and for his grace and his mercy and his love i love i love jesus i love the lord mm -hmm. i truly love the lord and I know that whatever comes up against me is only because I love the Lord. The devil is a kill joy. He wants to kill your joy. He will look to do that and things will happen. But let me here say this. Don't look at it and think it's, a, it's God that's doing, uh, doing it. God is allowing things to happen so that you may be, he might be glorified through you. 
And so there is a greater glory that is be, to be manifested in and through you. And the life of Joseph will um, explain that and uh, unveil that. There's a greater glory that is coming to each and every one of you. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for this word. You know, I woke up this morning and I said, that I've got a word and then God you diverted me and the reason being Lord is that so many things you have put in place even to let me know that there is a season and it's already here that you're ushering me into right now and so Father I thank you because it's not only for me but it's everybody that is in the hearing of your voice here today. Father, I know that even when you spoke to Joseph through a dream, it wasn't only for him. It wasn't for him. It was for the whole nation of Israel. The generations to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It was not only for him, but it was for even in Egypt at that time. Father, those that are not even in your will, that, those people that are not even submitted to your worship, to your glory, they benefit. It's for the world. It was to save the world. You would elevate Joseph just to save the world that would come into a period of famine. From the pit to the palace, Father God. And Father, I just pray for each and every person that they may be at a low point in their life. They may be suffering certain things in their life. They may be in a pit at this time. They may be in a subject to authorities where they're under their control. They feel bound up. They feel restricted, Father, but there is a liberty that is coming to them. There is a, a lifting up. There is an elevating. There is an acceleration that is happening in their life. Things are speeding up. The process of your glory is speeding up in, your in their lives right now. I decree and declare an open heaven over each and every one of them as they call out, as they cry out to you and say, Not enough is enough. God, I'm receiving a greater glory from you right now in Jesus' name. Father, you, have, you know how to do it. You know when to do it. You know the season. Father, enable us to be patient. Give, grant us the, the fruit of long suffering that we develop it through us, through the Holy Spirit. We may suffer long in certain areas, but God, give us the grace to go through it. You said in your word, you will not give us more than we can bear. But with the temptation, with the trial, you will make a way of escape. You did it for Joseph. You can do it for each and every one of us right now. Father, there's a greater glory to be had. Oh, thank you, Father. Father, I pray your anointing. Not only the anointing that will teach them all things concerning your will for your, their lives right now. That you will speak in a way that they will understand you. That they will see you. They will see your wonder. They will see your sign. They will see. Give them eyes to see. Spiritual eyes to see. That they will be encouraged in you. Even as David said. I will encourage myself in the Lord. Even when he went through his dark period. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let it be so. With each and every one of us. Let there be a lifting up in Jesus' name. 
Koraba satala la basika na na mokoto brosekera. Lima na wako shikaraba. Likoto brosekere anda. In the name of Jesus. Shibrosanda la la baki anda raba. Shimronda la 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 karaba. Shibrosakara. Loose. Loose them. From the bonds of wickedness right now. And propel them into their divine destiny, I pray. Shibrosaha. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank. You. We take the reins of your glory right now, knowing that you will guide us every step of the way, and you're doing that right now, Father. In all things, we give you thanks and praise this morning. We will not be anxious. We will not be fearful. We will not dread what will come upon us. But we know who is for us. And if you be for us, who then can be against us? As we stand still, Father, we know that you are fighting our battles behind the scene. In the realm of the spirit, even now you're sending forth your ministering angels to minister onto the ears of salvation. Father, you are making that crooked path straight right now in the name of Jesus. It may not seem clear, but there's a light that will appear, appear and that's your glory, Father, that will guide us along our way father i thank you i receive they receive we all receive in jesus name the latter will be greater than the former right now in jesus name father god that visions dreams will come open dreams father god the revelation reveal truth and it comes from your logos, Father, your word, your written word, Father, it will come forth and it will speak loud. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. I thank you and call us to excellence, Father. Even as Joseph had an excellent spirit, Father, you have called us to excellence. Let us be the best that you have created us to be right now. Let us endeavor to do all that you have called us to do right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I bless your holy name. I commit each and every one of them, every one of your sons and your daughters, I commit them unto you, Lord, right now. Have your own way. Speak, open their inner ears that they will hear you, Lord, I pray. Open their eyes that they will see you, Lord, I pray. Open their heart that they will experience you, Lord, I pray. Order their footsteps that they will be guided by you, O oh Lord. Take their hands that whatever they do, you will confirm it with signs following, Lord, I pray. Take their lips that as they speak, they will speak as an oracle of you and that they will, you will confirm every word through them with signs. For Father, supernatural supernaturally use them for your glory i pray in the name of jesus anoint them even as you have appointed them father god that the power of god will come upon them and that they will be a witness unto you in the name of jesus i decree it and declare it i take stress out of the picture i take anxiety out of i drive you out in jesus name every mind binding spirit i command you to loose and let go every spirit that will bring doubt and fear go now in jesus be dispelled now in jesus name thy will be done O oh lord speak lord keep us heal us enable us make us whole make us complete in you father because what you have promised goes way beyond my condition right now so father i thank you that i'm healed that i'm made whole i'm made complete in you lord thank you for your supernatural ability in jesus mighty name Amen and amen and amen. So be it. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God be the glory, great things he has done and he continues to do. So bless you, each and every one. Have an impactful week. Be encouraged. 
as I said, read the life of Joseph. You'd be surprised what you can, and ask God to reveal truth. You'd be surprised what you will extract from it. Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. And God will speak to you about, <laughs> see, God, God will take him from a situation where he's amongst his brothers and, br and bring him into a heathen land where they don't even worship almighty God. <laughs> so he would influence that land. He impose his grace and his favor upon that land. What So ultimately, God's people would be delivered. God is wonderful. He's a great God. Don't, don't put him in a box. You can't put God in a box. God will do exponentially more than you can even think. Imagine, dream, fathom, according to the power that works in you. Allow that power to be the love of God. God is love. Amen. Bless you, every one of you. And I welcome Deborah. I didn't welcome you before. Charmaine and Maxine, welcome you. Dinah, Doris, I welcome you. Bless you, Mom and Fiona. Some have come, some have gone, but Tamara. we've Tamara. Ah, uh, Tamara, bless you, Tamara. Welcome you. Love every one of you. God's got a great thing. Mm -hmm. Let me just share this. I'm going to share this. I'm going to share this because I'm going to share it during the week. God has impressed upon me. Um, there's so many of you that are so blessed. You're so, you're so blessed with the word, the riches of God's word, and his anointing is upon you. And God has said to me that one of the things is that as a part of Impact Alive Ministries, I believe that God is birthing a women's ministry out of it. And so I see God was showing me even yesterday. And uh, even when I was in the background of uh, the Saturday prayer, um, prayers um, clinic is that I saw women and I saw women that come in from all walks of life. They're coming from all, but they're being broken and they're being hurt and they're being beaten and destroyed emotionally and mentally. And God, I, and I'm just saying that I saw where women, even from whether they would be the prayer platform or even a Sunday platform, would be reaching out to them. And when I say women, I didn't see just one person. I saw the women and that it would be far reaching, far reaching, that people, women would hear about it. And in no time at all, that it would grow exponentially because there is a need for transparency. There's a need for openness, but more so there's a need for the manifestation of the glory of God, his power to be appropriated into the lives of these broken people. Far and near, and when I say far and near, I'm talking about within the body of Christ and outside of the body of Christ, because there's gonna be salvation, but salvation also comes with deliverance and healing and restoration. And I speak this and I speak it prophetically because it came and it was impressed upon me, you know. And I believe that many of you, even here on this platform, would be a part of that. And in so doing, you will receive what God has for you more so than in, at any other time. So I'm just sharing that with you because that's heartfelt let me see, say again that um we're gonna have and i'm saying this because i'm just gonna put it out there on the 17th of um december we're having um 